Yeah, good morning to all of you. It's very good morning. Uh, yesterday we have uh, uh, discussed about that uh, female reproductive system and uh, its relevant parts. Maybe remembering that female reproductive system also consists of uh, this primary sex organ and uh, secondary sex organs. Primary sex organ means what the sex organ directly involved in the sexual reproduction by producing gametes. And this primary sex organ is also producing uh, this uh, hormone. We call it as what the female sex hormone. There are two female sex organs, both uh, progesterone and estrogen. And uh, secondary sex organ, that discussion we have uh, completed yesterday. Now we are going to discuss in very detail about the sex organs. It includes ovidic, you may be remembering as the details of what the uh, ovidics or the fallopian tubules. And uh, we will also uh, go through another other uh, secondary reproductive organ present in the female. That only we are going to discuss today in the morning. Now, we will see uh, the details of uh, this uterus. All of you know, uterus is uh, a bag, it's a muscular bag. And this bag is uh, used for uh, keeping that young baby to complete their uh, early days of uh, its development. And this is what the structure of the female uh, reproductive system. Sir, keep it. It's, uh, that camera, camera is, yeah, right. And see, this is what the uh, structure of the uterus is a muscular back. Yesterday we have seen the location and uh, it is having mainly three areas. And this area is called as what the fundus region. It is somewhat bulged area. And this is what the body of the uterus normally where this implantation takes place. And this is what the narrow area we call it as what the cervix. So these are the three important area of this muscular back. We call it as what the uterus. And in this uterus, as I told you, it is fundus and it is what the body and it is what the cervical region. You go little more detail. There is a canal inside a uh, lumen inside uh, the uterus that only we call it as what the uh, os, OS, that is what the uterine uh, chamber where this uh, young one is getting developed and mature. And uh, this wall of this uterus is consists of three layers. The outermost layer, you can find it here. It's very tough and it is for the protection. And we call it as what the perimetrium. And there is a thick uh, muscular layer. And this muscular layer is called as what the myometrium. And the uh, inner layer that is called as what the endometrium. It is full of uh, uh, the blood vessels. Okay. Huh. Now, okay. Yeah, now it's over. Okay, uh, once again. Uh, uh, you just to go through. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So once again, we will uh, uh, see that uh, structure of the uterus. Okay. Are you able to see that uh, that pictures? Okay. Right. See. Uh, come to the detail of the uterus and its structural details. And uterus is a uh, consist of mainly three areas. And this is what the fundus region, this is what the body, and this one is called as what the cervix and fundus region is somewhat thickened, right? And the body where the real implantation of what the uh, blasto, blastulas take place. And this is what the narrow region, we call it as what the cervix region, right? Then here, you can see some more detail of its structure. As I told you, it is a fundus region, this is the body, and it is what a narrow cervix region. And here, the wall of this uterus consists of mainly three parts. The outermost tough connectivity tissue is exclusively for the protection. 
and that only we call it as what the perimetrium here you can see that uh, gray colored line externally and exclusively for its protection only it's made with a tough connective tissue and there is a muscular thick layer and it is called as what the myometrium only and uh, there is an innermost layer called as what the endometrium and it is full of blood beds and connected with the uh, number of uh, very minute blood capillaries and here you can see the structure in detail as i told you this is what the body of uh, the uterus only there are three layer outermost one is what the perimetrium and uh, it is what the peritoneum only and the uh, second one is what myometrium and it is made with the uh, smooth muscles and this muscle can go for contraction or relaxation that only making this uterus uh, move right and endometrium is the innermost thin layer and uh, it is made with the uh, epithelium only uh, consists of uh, many layers of blood beds, many layers of blood capillaries. And this is what the cervical canal, very narrow canal uh, in the cervix region. And uh, this is what the detailed structure of the uterus. As I told you, this is what the different layers. There you can find this, what the endometrium. It is full of blood capillaries and uh, this area is called as what the myometrium there we can find the uh, muscle smooth muscle and uh, perimetrium is there and it is exclusively for uh, protecting the uterus from the external shock and external environment because it is made up of what the tough connective tissues only. So such type of very rich blood supply we can find in the endometrial region of the uterus and it is very essential for uh, providing the material for the growing embryo. Then uh, here we can see uh, more detail about the uh, uh, uterine structure. It's what the outermost layer here you can find the outermost layer and it is tough connective tissues only we call it as what the perimetrium and there is a layer uh, here after this perimetrium here you can see a layer and it is called as what the myometrium only and it is made up of the smooth muscles and there is a layer inner to that that only we call it as what the endometrium this is what the endometrium innermost layer see the color of the endometrium it is only because of what the rich supply with the blood vessels only particularly the blood capillaries and uh, three layers remember it is what the perimetrium outermost layer and it is what the muscular layer made up of smooth muscle called as what the myometrium and this is what the innermost layer full of blood capillaries and we call it as what the endometrium and these are the three layers of uh, the uh, uh, layers present in the uterus and here the same thing you can find it is what the uh, what you can say myometrium and uh, this is what the small layer but it is very tough and it is called as what the uh, perimetrium only and this what the thickened muscular smooth muscle and this layer is called as what the myometrium and uh, here you can see the endometrium it's full of what the glands then uh, blood vessels only right so this is what the detailed structure of uh, uh, this uh, uterus we will see the uh, and here you can see how the uterus is designed to keep a developing child inside that child is very safe very safe inside this uterus and uterus is having all the facility to protect the child and also to provide the nutrients and other material and the uterus is also helping to take all the unnecessary things like waste material from the developing child uh, to the mother for its elimination so this is what the design of the uterus and it is what the detailed structure of the uterus then come to the another one that is mammary glands that is also a secondary sex organ in female mammary glands all of you know the importance of mammary gland you know after giving birth to the young one that child is not uh, able to take anything from outside 
So always it depending the mother only for all kinds of nutrients. Not only the nutrient, even antibodies are also given to the child by the mother only through the milk. Because uh, in case of child, uh, that immunity is not there. Because the body is not at all exposed to any kinds of microorganisms so far. Right. That is why this mammary gland is secrete all kinds of nutrient and also consist of what the antibody to protect the child from all kinds of diseases. That is what the importance of the uh, milk and it is produced by a gland. We call it as what the mammary gland solely. So mammary gland is nothing but it's a modified uh, sweat gland solely. It is modified for the milk secretion and it is there in male but it is very rudimentary and it's very functionless. And uh, it uh, secrete milk, mammary gland secrete milk for the nourishment of the young one, particularly after giving birth. Then it consists of a uh, number of uh, lobules. We call it as what the lactiferous lobule. That lactiferous lobule only secrete the milk. It is not uh, taken from the blood or any other part of the mother. And it is secreted by what you can say lactiferous lobule only and milk is what the secretion, secretion of what this lactiferous lobules only. And lactiferous ducts are also there and connected to the lactiferous lobule and uh, this duct only taking the milk from the lactiferous lobule after its preparation and it sent to outside through the openings. Many openings will be there in the nipple region. And uh, through this opening only milk will be ejected out. And uh, you can see what the structure of the mammary gland here. And these are all what the lactiferous lobules can find many lobs, uh, lobules here. And every lobule is separated with uh, what these adipose tissues and other connective tissues in between. Connective tissues are there and adipose tissues are there in between the lactiferous lobule. And this lactiferous lobules only secrete the milk inside. And after secreting the milk by the lactiferous lobule, it is taken to the nipple region by using separate lactiferous duct. And this lactiferous duct opens separately in the nipple region. And uh, through this opening only, milk is ejected out from the mammary gland for the child. Right. See another uh, details about the mammary glands. And it consists of around 15 to 25 tubular, uh, tubule alveolar type of lobules. 15 to 25 lobules will be there in a mammary gland. And this lobule only secrete the milk. As I told you, milk is nothing but the secretion of these lobules only. And all the lobules are separated with uh, connective tissues and adipose tissues. In between the lobule, we can find these connective tissues and adipose tissues. These are all what the lobule, in between the lobule, we can find the adipose tissues and connective tissues. And it's all the lobules are separated each other. And uh, from each lobule, milk is taken due to the contraction of this uh, alveoli. This milk is taken outside uh, separately through the lactiferous duct and all the lactiferous duct open separately in the nipple region. There is no common duct to take the milk out. All the lactiferous ducts are open to out separately in the nipple region. This is what the nipple region there we can find so many opening and through this opening actually this opening of the lactiferous duct only and through this opening only the milk is ejected out for the young ones and this is what the detailed structure of the lactiferous duct and uh, these are all what the suspensory ligament and ligaments only attached to the muscles present in the uh, chest region here and these are all what you can say milk duct separately it open in the nipple region and this is what the black colored circular area in the nipple region called as what the areola and uh, here uh, we can find this uh, what the fat pads in between the alveoli in between the alveoli the secretory uh, unit uh, we can find so many uh, that pectoral fat pads that's all about, uh, this is what the alveoli and these are the epithelium which is internally lined this alveoli 
and uh, it is myo epithelial cells are there to cover and because of the contraction of these uh, muscles on the epithelium only milk is ejected out from this gland and uh, epithelial cells are there it is internally lined this uh, gland and this only secrete the cells these are all what the secretory cell milk secretory cells only after secreting the milk it will be collected in this alveoli and because of what the contraction of the muscles that is what the myoepithelial cell it will be taken and finally this is what the milk duct and it will open outside in the nipple region so this is what the way it works for the young ones to provide the nutrients then come to the another secondary sex organ in female and it is called as what the vulva and uh, actually this vulva is an external female genital organs only and it's a collective name for all the external organ female genital organ and uh, it's called as what the external genitalia and it includes vagina clitoris and genital glands vagina is nothing but the opening of the uterus to outside only and uh, clitoris is what a very sensitive uh, uh, erectile tissue present at the corner of this vulva and uh, many glands are also there in the vulva region particularly around this vagina to secrete many material these are all what the secretory glands only and these three things are collectively called as what the vulva right and the vagina is the opening of the uterus uh, to outside and clitoris is the sensitive organ present at the corner of uh, this erect and it is erectile nature like a penis and uh, genital glands are also uh, secretory cells and present in the vulva region you can see the uh, structure of this uh, vulva it is what the external uh, female genitalia and uh, this is what the opening of the uterus to outside and we call it as what the vagina only and here in this corner there is one erectile tissues a very sensitive one and we call it as what the clitoris and another one is what the labia majora and the labia minora there are two flap uh, present here in this region and the inner one is called as what the labia minora here it is given in red colored here and uh, there is another flap outside of both labia minora and it is called as what the labia majora and uh, many glands are also located secretory cells are located in this vulva region and all together we call it as what the vulva only right it includes what mainly three thing that is uh, this vagina then clitoris and uh, genital gland and also having two flap like structure to cover this area and we call it as what the inner one labia minora and outer one is what the labia majora right so that's all about what the sex organs present in the female reproductive system as i told you uh, female reproductive system consists of uh, primary sex organ and uh, secondary sex organ see primary sex organ is always the uh, ovary only and that only acting as what the female uh, primary sex organ mainly for two purpose uh, and one is to secrete the female uh, sex hormones like progesterone and estrogen and another one is to produce this female gamete that we call it as what the ovum and process of the formation of ovum for uh, producing ovum in the ovary only formation of sperm that we already discussed that it is called as what the sperma uh, spermatogenesis four things we have learned one is what the microsporogenesis that is in case of what the plant produce what the microspore or pollen grain then megasporogenesis it is what the production of ovum in the uh, plants and uh, megaspore only and uh, another one is spermatogenesis that is for the production of sperm in case of human being and fourth one is oogenesis it is to this is what the process to produce ovum in the ovary only 
See, it is not like uh, what you can say the spermatogenesis. As I told you, sperms many number produced by the human being every day. Whereas in case of female, only one ovum will be produced in one sexual cycle that take what 28 to 29 days only. Right. And uh, this process, the process to produce the ovum in ovary is termed as what the oogenesis. That only we are uh, going to discuss in very detail. And it's not like uh, spermatogenesis. And uh, this process of oogenesis take place, uh, uh, what you can say, 25th uh, weeks after the fertilization. And uh, some of the events are happening in the embryonic stage. Some other events are happening during the puberty period and the remaining events happening just before the fertilization only. In three places only, it complete what the entire process of what the oogenesis, right? That you have to remember all the time and uh, explain the process of oogenesis with a schematic diagram only so that it is very easy to explain and very easy to understand the concepts, right? Do it. And see, the oogenesis is the process of formation of egg or ovum from the oogonial cells present in the ovary. There is a specialized cell in the ovary and we call it as what the oogonial cells only and these oogonial cells only develop to become what the ovum in the ovary. And formation of oogonial cell complete at 25 week in the fetus. After this fertilization, uh, 25 week only it take for the development of what the oogonial cell that is what the sexual cells only, and this produce 25th week in the fetus, right? Then it undergo mitosis and produce number of oogonial cells. Number of oogonial cells are required to produce enough quantity of ovum later. So that is why this oogonial cell after its formation undergo the repeated mitotic division and produce what the many oogonial cell. And this oogonial cell are deployed in nature having two number of chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes present in the uh, oogonial cells, present in the fetus. And this oogonial cells only undergo enlargement and it become what the primary oocytes. And primary oocytes only go for uh, the further development during the puberty period, right? That only we are going to discuss here in detail. So this is what the events happening in the embryonic stage. So as I told you, it take only 25 weeks after fertilization to develop the eugonial cells. And this eugonium undergo a process of mitosis repeatedly many times and produce what the number of eugonial cells and eugonial, eugonial cells are all deployed in nature having 23 pairs of chromosome in their nucleus. And all these oogonial cells in the embryonic stage itself go for the enlargement and produce what the primary oocyte. And this proof primary oocyte in the embryonic stage itself will go for uh, meiotic division number one. You know, meiotic division is number one. It is what reduction division only. There are three stages like a prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and uh, telophase. These are the uh, what you can say, four stages of this meiosis and prophase of uh, the meiosis is very elaborate. You know, liptotin, cygotin, pachytin, diplotin, and uh, diakinesis. So these are the uh, stages of the prophase in case of uh, uh, meiosis 1. And it undergo only the process of what the prophase. So that means it complete up to the diakinesis. In, uh, these are the events happening during the embryonic stage. Once again, this oogonium get developed in the embryo in uh, 25th week of its development. Then these oogonial cells uh, go for repeated mitotic division so that many oogonial cells will be produced with uh, two number of chromosomes. And uh, this will go for enlargement in the embryonic stage itself to produce the primary oocyte. And this primary oocyte go for the meiosis, but it complete only its prophase. That means liptotin, cygotin, pachytin, diplotin, and uh, diakinesis. Only up to uh, diakinesis only, it go for uh, its division, never complete the division. And uh, this primary oocytes will be remains in the embryo and will be silent. And this will go for the next development only during the puberty period. 
See, during puberty period, this primary oocyte uh, complete metaphase. Prophase is already completed in the embryonic stage and remaining metaphase, anaphase, telophase and uh, cytokinesis, that division of cytoplasm, they complete the cell division the, of the primary oocyte and produce what the secondary oocytes. Naturally, it's what a reduction division so that the chromosome number of the secondary oocyte is only n number or it is haploid cell. And here, we can find formation of two haploid cells and uh, due to the division of the primary oocyte and uh, one is secondary oocyte is a haploid only and another one is non-functional, very rudimentary, a small cell and we call it as what the polar nuclei only, right. This is what the polar nuclei produced when the primary oocyte undergo the process of the division and it is happening during the puberty period only. That is, uh, uh, com the, it complete what the prophase stage in the uh, embryonic stage itself. Then whenever it's uh, getting into the puberty period and this primary oocyte go for uh, the remaining stages of meiosis one, division number one, that is metaphase, anaphase, telophase and uh, cytoplasmic division and exactly the cell divided into two haploid cell and one is non-functional that we call it as what the polar uh, cell and another one is what large and functional we call it as what the secondary oocytes. You know in case of meiosis there are two divisions. The first division is what the reduction division only, but second one is what ordinary equational division like mitosis. And this secondary oocyte undergo the second division that is what ordinary mitotic division only. And uh, it complete uh, what you can say prophase and metaphase. Then anaphase and telophase remain that will take place only at the just before this fertilization. And uh, during the puberty period, the secondary oocytes undergo the division number two, meiotic division number two, and it's uh, undergo only prophase and metaphase. And uh, this secondary oocytes, after completing prophase and metaphase only, uh, go for the next division just uh, before this fertilization only. After uh, ejaculation of the sperm into the genital tract of female, and uh, this will uh, reach near to the egg and some kinds of factors are there in the sperm lies in that only uh, initiate that only motivate the secondary oocyte to go for uh, the remaining phase anaphase because it completely only prophase and metaphase then they have to go for anaphase telophase and uh, cell division that is what cytoplasmic division called as cytokinesis and after completing anaphase telophase and cytokinesis exactly secondary oocytes also will divided into two and produce two cell and both cells are haploid only because secondary oocyte is haploid and uh, second division is simple equational mitotic division only naturally it produce two cell and one is with a uh, n number of chromosome and another one is also with n number of chromosome but the second one is very small and non-functional one and it is called as what the polar body or polar i mean it is uh, polar cells only right so there are two polar cells produced here i mean three uh, four polar cells produced here if whenever a diploid cell undergo the meiotic division total four cells will be produced at the end and here that uh, here you can see that uh, polar nuclei and this polar nuclei sometimes go for division and this polar nuclei also produce two polar nuclei. So here two polar nuclei and here also it produce another polar nuclei. So three polar nuclei produced during the egg formation or oogenesis and uh, only one cell will be functional and that only we call it as what the uh, egg cell and that only uh, fertilized with the sperm to produce what the zygote. So this is what the way through which uh, female is producing the female gamete and this process of production of this gamete in this ovary by the female is called as what the oogenesis oogenesis that is what the production of ovum in the ovary once again you just to go through the events happening in these three phases and one is in the embryonic stage only and other events happening in the puberty period and third event happening just before the fertilization and uh, these are the events happening during the embryonic stage this ugonium it's get developed in the 25th week of its embryo 
and it divides repeatedly uh, through the process of mitosis to make or uh, to multiply its number. And uh, uh, this will go for enlargement in the embryonic stage itself and produce primary oocyte. And primary oocytes will divide meiotically, but complete only the prophase. That also only the first phase of the, I mean, only the prophase up to the diakinesis. And these primary oocytes only go for the next division during the puberty period and complete metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis and divide two cell. Primary oocyte divide two cell. One is secondary oocyte, it's functional. And another one is what the polar cell, it is non-functional and very small. And this will divide again and produce two polar nuclei sometime. And the secondary oocyte is what the functional one go for the next division, meiosis. And uh, this meiosis number two is what equational division only and it complete up to the prophase and metaphase. And this secondary, you know, oocytes go for uh, the remaining anaphase, telophase and cytokinesis during just before the fertilization and produce what a functional egg cell. And this functional egg cell only fertilized with uh, the sperm and produce what as I got. This is what the process of formation of uh, ovum in the ovary and it is termed as what the oogenesis only right here. We can see what the multiplication phase, the zoogonial cell go for mitotic division repeatedly produce many number of oogonium and this will go for what enlargement and produce what the primary oocytes that is what the growth phase only and primary oocyte is deployed and it go for the meiotic division number one, that is what the maturation phase and produce what the polar body here, it is very small and non-functional and it is large and functional called as what the secondary oocyte and this is meiosis number one. So naturally this diploid cell will be converted into two haploid cell. And this haploid cell, that polar body, first polar body is non-functional, again it can go for the next division. Because uh, there are two division in meiosis, meiosis one number one and meiosis number two. And uh, this polar body also will go for the next division and produce what the two, sec uh, what you can say, uh, polar bodies. And these two polar bodies are non-functional. Of course, it is haploid in nature. Right, second polar body. And here, the secondary oocyte, you know, it's go for next division uh, of meiosis, meiosis number two. And here it produces uh, uneven cell. One is smaller and another one is large. And large one is what the functional. This one is what again the polar body only. So total two, three polar bodies are produced uh, by the female during the process of oogenesis. And uh, this uh, functional uh, matured ovum only will be converted into what the zygote after uh, fusing with you know secondary uh, oocyte only what uh, fertilized with the uh, what you can say, the sperm and uh, complete that meiotic number, division number two and these two nuclei, male pronuclei and female pronuclei go for fusion and produce a deployed uh, nucleus inside and that only we call it as what the zygote, right. Then male gamete provide uh, 23 chromosomes and female gametes already having 23 chromosomes in their pronucleus. Whenever they go for fusion, produce what a de uh, deployed nucleus in the zygote. Zygote is always deployed. 50% genetic contribution by the paternal part through the sperm and 50% chromosomes uh, donated by the female individual only. And uh, this is what the female egg structure. This is what the egg produced by the female in the ovary, a matured egg. And uh, here you can see the same thing we already discussed, corona radiata, sona pellucida. Then uh, there is a membrane here called as what the vitelline membrane is having some importance to avoid the polyspermy. And uh, there is a nucleus here and uh, uh, ooplasm is there. Ooplasm is nothing but the cytoplasm of the egg cell only. Then come to another important uh, uh, topic uh, that is menstrual cycle in female. Menstrual cycle. There are two type of cycle in uh, mammals. One is menstrual cycle and another one is estrocycle. cycle. See these uh, primates, 
like a man monkey etc is always going for the menstrual cycle only and this is what the sexual cycle in primates so there are uh, two term mentioned here one is what the menarche it is the first menstruation be begin at the pubertic period that is uh, uh, referred as what the menarche and uh, menstrual cycle ceases around 50 years in female and it is called as what the menopause. It is menarche is a starting and menopause is the end of what the uh, sexual cycle in primates. Right. Then it repeats. It is repeated at an average interval of 28 or 29 days. It is what a cycle. Every 28 or 29 days, you know, it uh, repeats the same events. And that is why we call it as what the sexual cycle or menstrual cycle. There is a process for the development of blood vessel on the uterine wall to implant fertilizer. While discussing about the structure of the uh, uterus, I told you there is an internal lining called as what the endometrium. And this endometrium is uh, full of blood capillaries and uh, this gland, uterine glands, right? And uh, this arrangement is very much necessary for uh, uh, implantation of fertilized egg because fertilized egg required uh, uh, material from the mother to develop. And that will be provided only by the blood capillaries. And many glands are also there in the uterine wall. So this development should be there to implant a fertilized egg on the uterine wall. And if no fertilization, all the arrangement made in the uterus become wastefully because actually they are arranging that the uterus is arranging everything. Many layers of blood buds and this uh, uterine gland for uh, the implantation of the uh, fetus, implantation of this what the fertilized egg only. But if it is not uh, fertilized or if it is not implanted or the arrangement made in the uterine wall become waste, so what happened? It uh, rupture all the arrangement like a blood vessel, glands, everything get ruptured and sending out through this vagina and we call it as what the menstrual flow. And let us see what different stages of the menstrual cycle. After this uh, removal of everything from the endometrial wall, it start preparing again for, uh, because every time it is uh, expecting a fertilized egg to implant, right? That is why every time they are making same arrangement repeatedly one after another. If it is not fertilized, that will remove it and they start preparing for the next ovum to implant, right? So that is what the cycle, it is happening in cyclic way, consists of mainly uh, three even one is what the menstruation or its menstrual flow take uh, three to four days in a cycle then second one is what the proliferative phase or we call it as what the follicular phase only and it take 10 to 12 days in the cycle and uh, third one is what the secretory phase or we call it as what the luteal phase and it take 12 to 14 days in a cycle altogether it take 28 or 29 days and this will be repeated one after another if there is no fertilization and implantation menstrual cycle followed by the proliferative phase and the proliferative phase followed by the secretory phase if it is not implanted naturally what again go for the uh, menstrual uh, menstruation then proliferative phase then secretory phase then again go for menstruation proliferative phase and secretory phase it is what happening and repeated one after another in a cycle if it is implanted if that fertilized egg is implanted on the uterine wall there will be no such a cycle and there will be no such a cycle right and this cycle will be stopped after the implantation right so we will see the different stages of menstrual cycle in the primates female primate the female release ovum in ovary 28 to 29 days from the ovary and this process only we call it as what the ovulation and for the implantation of this fertilized egg uterus is also making a lot of arrangement particularly in the endometrial region we can find the formation of many layers of blood beds and many glands are also started uh, uh, produced and if no fertilization, uterus break all this arrangement and send it out. 
and this will repeat in every 28 days if no implantation right it includes menstruation then proliferate phase and this uh, secretory phase then see the events one after another in detail this is the first one is what the menstruation or we call it as what the menstrual flow they in this period we can see that bleeding because all the arrangement made in the uterine wall here you can find these blood capillaries blood vessels or uh, what you can say many glands are also there in the internal lining of the uterus called as what endometrium not only in the uterine region even the initial region of uh, the oviduct also having such type of arrangement and all this arrangement you know became way so what happened is break the mucosa gland internal lining of endometrium everything get broken up and uh, send out from the uterus through this vagina and this is called as what the menstruation or the menstrual flow and it extends for two to three days or three to four days depend on the individual only then mucosa glands and internal lining of the endometrium that epithelial lining of the endometrium which consists of what ciliary epithelium as well as what the glandular epithelium and everything get broken up and blood capillary present in the fallopian tubule and vaginal region also broken down and sent outside. And uh, this is what the event happening during the menstrual phase or the menstrual flow and take three to four days in an individual. See, these are the arrangement made by the uterus to receive the fertilized egg for the implantation. But no fertilization and no implantation. So what happened? All the arrangement made in the uterine wall, endometrial wall became waste. So everything broken up and uh, taken outside. And uh, this period we can see the uh, bleeding and uh, it is called as what the menstrual fluid, right? Then come to the next one after uh, this menstruation or uh, this uh, bleeding period, there will be another uh, stage we call it as what the proliferative phase. So after removing everything from the uterus, because it is expecting that fertilized egg to implant after 28 days. So that time arrangement should be there. So again, they are going for making the same arrangement during the proliferative phase only. And it extends from 10 to 12 days. That much time is required to make this arrangement again. And uh, growth and proliferation of the tissue in the internal lining of endometrium. Then fallopian tubules and vaginal region. You know, everything has broken and sent it outside. So again, it go for growing and also proliferate the tissues in the internal lining of this endometrium. Uh, and uh, making the same arrangement again. And uh, internal epithelial layer formed as a continuous one because while uh, breaking all these things, you know, damage is there for the epithelial lining of the endometrium and it is also repaired and make the continuous layer and repairing of ruptured blood vessel and ovarian follicle also start growing because they have to produce what next ovum after this 28 days. So along with uh, the preparation in the uterus, that uh, inside the ovary, ovarian follicle also start developing a new ovum because it also take again 28 days to release a new ovum. So that ovum should be produced in the ovarian follicle. So along with this preparation in the uterus, that ovary also start preparing for making a new ovum for uh, this ovulation. Right. This is what the preparation period we can see what increasing the uh, thickness of the endometrium. Endometrium get thick and considerably due to what uh, different layers of blood buds. Right. Then along with this, estrogen start to secrete. Estrogen, this hormone actually produced by this ovary only and it start increasing the production of estrogen after the menstrual period. And all the secondary sex organs get stimulated and start growing. Then endometrium thicken considerably due to what the different layers of blood buds arrange one after another. And the uterine glands became elongated and screw shaped, ready to secrete and became screw shaped and ready to secrete. All the things get uh, repaired and uh, started functioning. And the uterus now is ready to receive the fertilized egg. And ovulation takes place at the end of this phase. Right. See, ovulation is because of what the uh, ovum produced in the ovarian follicles in the ovary. 
and it is getting ready within a short period of time and during this period uh, uh, what it is making all the arrangement in the uterus that many layers of blood buds will be produced and glands become very functional and screw shaped ready to secrete so all the arrangement they made in the uterus at the end of this phase this ovum start uh, uh, what you can say ovum start uh, coming out from this ovarian follicle and that will be called it as what the ovulation and ovulation take place at the end only then after this ovulation what happened it go for the uh, secretory phase now this is what the time of fertilization now ovum is released and uh, this uh, period is not safe period because now after the uh, uh, releasing of ovum from the ovary, naturally this ovum will be weighted in the ampullary region of the ovary duct to weight the male reproductive gametes, right? So that uh, period is called as what the secretory period or luteal phase only. And this extends 12 to 14 days, 12 to 14 days. Right. And ruptured ovarian follicle change into corpus luteum. See, after releasing ovum from this ovarian follicle, uh, what happened uh, that our ovarian follicle get ruptured, then only it will be released. And this ruptured ovarian follicle will be converted into a temporary uh, gland. That only we call it as what the corpus luteum here. You can see that corpus luteum. See, this is what the ovum is getting developed inside the ovarian follicle. So here, uh, at the time of ovulation, what happened? It break the ovarian follicle and release the ovum out. And ovum, of course, it will be taken by the oviduct and waited in the ambulatory region and waiting for uh, male gamete to fertilize. At the same time, the ruptured ovarian follicle will be converted into what? A temporary gland. A temporary gland that only called as what the corpus luteum and this corpus luteum is exclusively for secreting a hormone called as what the progesterone hormones so we will see the functions of the hormone later right so here progesterone hormones start produced by this uh, uh, ruptured graphene uh, follicles and uh, uh, uterine wall uh, taken further and uh, is ready to receive the fertilized egg to implant and uterine gland starts secreting the juices in the uterus and if no fertilization so many arrangements they made in the uterus if no fertilization what happened that corpus luteum the already there in the body of female and secrete the progesterone that will be uh, converted into another uh, what you can say material we call it as what the corpus albicans and stop the production of the estrogen hormone. If no fertilization, the corpus luteum uh, regenerate and converted into corpus albicans. Corpus, corpus luteum only secrete the progesterone hormone. After conversion of the corpus luteum into corpus albicin, they stop the production of what the progesterone hormone at the end of this phase. Actually, the progesterone hormone, they start secreting for the, uh, what you can say, existence of what the pregnancy. That is why the progesterone hormone is termed as what the uh, pregnancy hormone is uh, essential. And that is why in uh, pregnant women, this uh, corp, uh, this uh, hormone is uh, the dominating, progesterone hormone is the dominating hormone in this, what you can say, pregnant women, throughout the pregnancy, this only dominate in the body of the female because it is secreted by the corpus, uh, uh, um, it is secreted by the corpus luteum only. If no fertilization, Naturally, that corpus luteum will be converted into what corpus albicans and stop the production of what the progesterone hormone. And due to the absence of the progesterone in a uterus wall break its blood vessel and again go for the uh, menstruation. Menstruation, that is what the uh, flow of uh, bleeding will be there because of the absence of what uh, this progesterone in the body of female. And it is happening in a cyclic way. And let us see what the different kinds of hormones and uh, uh, present in the female, uh, see the fluctuation of what the different kinds of hormones in different uh, three phases in the menstrual cycle and see the uh, things happening to the ovarian follicles and see the, uh, what you can say, changes happen to the uh, inner uh, layer of the uterus, endometrium.
thickness and see that uh, in menstrual menstruation you can uh, we can find this uh, the ovarian follicle and uh, here uh, you can see the bleeding, rupturing of all the blood vessels and uh, sending it out uh, during the menstruation time. And during menstruation time, this dominant hormone in the female is for the FSH hormone only, that is follicle stimulating hormones only. And after this period of what the menstruation for uh, taking uh, three to four days, it will enter into what the next stage and the end of the next stage only that ovulation take place. Here I mentioned about that uh, in the, uh, what you can say, second phase, proliferative phase, we can find uh, this uh, releasing of ovum at the end. Right, ovulation take place at the end of this phase. Right, and uh, during this proliferative phase only, at the end of the proliferative phase only, this ovulation take place here. This is what the proliferate end of the proliferate phase, the ovulation. And for ovulation, you know, LH hormone is responsible, and the LH hormone only dominate during at the time of what the ovulation. Then during this phase, you know, estrogen hormone uh, dominate in the female body that only really responsible for the growth of ovum inside the graphene follicles, right? And suddenly after ovulation, estrogen comes down. Estrogen, it is represented with a pink color here. You can see the red one and uh, FSH is with the uh, orange color here. And this uh, FSH dominate uh, during the menstruation period only. And then uh, this estrogen start increasing in the body of female that only responsible for the formation of ovum inside the graphene follicle. And uh, at the time of uh, what you can say maturation of ovum in the graphene follicle, the immediately LH hormone shoot up. And this LH hormone only responsible for the ovulation. Actually, the ovum will be released from the graphene follicle by breaking its wall. And that only will be converted into corpus luteum later. And this corpus luteum start producing what the progesterone hormone. So that time what happened? LH hormone comes down. Then uh, this estrogen also comes down. Then FSH also comes down. And uh, the pro progesterone hormone only dominate in the body of the female because it is produced by uh, this uh, gland, a temporary gland only. Really, and it is produced from the ruptured uh, graphene follicle. And it is called as what the corpus luteum. And uh, corpus luteum start producing the progesterone hormone that only really responsible for the main energy. If uh, fertilization and implantation is happening, naturally what happened, progesterone continue as what the dominating hormone in the female body throughout the pregnancy. If no fertilization and implantation, this corpus luteum will be converted into corpus albicans so that the progesterone production will decline suddenly. So what happened, the entire, uh, what you can say, regimen made in the endometrium get uh, ruptured and it will be sent out through the vagina. And this is what the uh, events happening in the endometrium and see the uh, days, uh, 7 days, 14 days, 21 days and 28 days. You can see increase in the thickness of the endometrium by producing many layers of blood beds. And such type of blood buds and glands are very much required in the endometrium for uh, the implantation and it is increasing its thickness considerably in uh, in a first day it's uh, very less and the seventh day then 14 day 20. you see here after this ovulation you know we are expecting the uh, fertilized egg to implant somewhere here that is why it is increasing the thickness in the endometrial wall and if no fertilization naturally what happened this uh, will go for breaking all the arrangement and uh, again go for the first phase that is what the menstruation bleeding. So these are the different kinds of events happening during the menstrual cycle. See whenever you explain the menstrual cycle there are two aspects here. One is what the uh, physical changes happening in the body of the female particularly the changes happening in the endometrial lining and uh, what you can say the changes happening in the uh, that uh, ovarian follicle, all the things, all the aspects we have to mention. And uh, the same thing you have to mention about the role of what the different hormones in the female body for uh, this menstrual cycle. FSH is there, follicle stimulating hormone is there, 
that only dominate during the menstruation period then estrogen period only dominate uh, in the second uh, uh, luteus period and uh, in the secretory period that uh, progesterone only will be dominated and lh only responsible for the ovulation uh, rupturing of graphene follicle to release the ovum out right so that's all about what the different kinds of hormone here you can see the period this is what the first one then it is what the proliferative period we can find the proliferative period and this is what the FSH hormone uh, dominated during the period time or the first phase and uh, the second phase is what the proliferative phase there we can find the increasing the estrogen hormone at the time of what the uh, ovulation this uh, LH hormone only dominate that will really break the graphene follicle to release the ovum then it's uh, what you can say comes down and uh, in secretory period progesterone only dominate in the body of the female because uh, uh, corpus uh, luteum is there and uh, it is produced from the ruptured graphene follicle at the time of what the ovulation that is working in the body as a temporary endocrine gland and start secreting more quantity of progesterone and that only responsible for uh, the maintenance of the pregnancy if no implantation suddenly that corpus luteum will be converted into corpus albicans. So naturally what happened, the progesterone secretion also will come down and next FSH will shoot. That only responsible for this uh, first phase of menstrual cycle called as what the period. Right. Then come to the fertilization. I think uh, it is very clear to all of you. And this topic is very, very important as far as your examination is concerned because uh, many questions asked from this menstrual cycle in uh, uh, all the years of examination. So give prime important, particularly the role of hormone. You should know what are the things happening during uh, every stages of the menstrual cycle. Right. Then come to the next one, fertilization. All of you know. It is the process of uh, fusion of male gamete with the female gametes only. In case of human being, it is happening in the uh, fallopian tubules. While discussing about the structure of the fallopian tubule, I told you three area. And there is an area at the middle that is what the place where it can provide a suitable physical and chemical climate for uh, the fertilization. Right. So, in the process of fusion of this contrasting gamete, contrasting means what the male and female gamete fuse here. And after depositing male gamete in the female genital tract, sperm get activated and it start moving towards the egg. Yesterday, I told you about uh, two type of what uh, the chemical attraction. One is uh, uh, hyaluronidase enzymes, you know, that uh, always making the sperms to move towards the egg only. Egg only one egg will be released by the female either from the uh, left side of ovary or from the right side. But it's always the sperm move only towards that particular direction only. And activation of sperm is called as what the capacitation. Capacitation. It is after. Uh, uh, but you can say sending this male deep reproductive gamete into the female genital tract immediately it get capacitated, get activated. Activated sperm only able to move quickly towards what the egg. And uh, there is a competition between the sperm to reach the ovum for this fertilization. Uh, uh, thousands of sperms will be deposited by the male individual in the female genital tract. So naturally there will be a competition. And uh, the sperm which are uh, having uh, good quality only reaching first in the egg to fertilize, right? And uh, this is what the capacitation process. See that the male reproductive gamete, this is what the process of insemination taking inside the genital tract of female and it get capacitated, initial capacitation here in the uterus only. And uh, third even, uh, what you can say, sperm reserve in the isthmus region of the oviduct here. It is what the uh, creation of the transient sperms in the uh, this first part of the oviduct that is called as what the uh, 
um, isthmus region. Then it's uh, actually that uh, egg is weighted here in the ambulary region of the oviducts only, and it get hyperactivated in the uh, whenever it come to what you can say that um, isthmus region. After hyperactivation, it get uh, more speed and reaching quickly to the egg for this fertilization. That is what the last MN. That is what sperm penetration of the cumulus mass here. It is entering and the last what happened, the sperm getting the chance to penetrate the sauna pellucida and finally it is sending its what the pronucleus in the cell cytoplasm, cytoplasm of the uh, EX cell. Right. So these are the events happening during this uh, fertilization. Now let us see what is the reason, common reason for a capacitor. What is capacitation? This is what the simple activation of the sperm after uh, depositing this male gamete into the female genital tract. And the capacitation is the process to activate the sperm uh, to fertilize with the egg. Only activated sperm are permitted to move quickly through this female genital tract to meet the egg for fertilization. And ejaculation of sperm into the vagina trigger the motility of the sperm. This is what the initial capacitation. After ejaculation of the sperm into this vagina, it triggered the motility of the sperm and ciliary movement of the uterine wall. That uh, cilia are there. Ciliary epithelial layer is there in the endometrium. That ciliary movement also helping the sperms to move quickly. And the viscous fluid secreted by the uterine gland. Many glands are also there in the endometrial lining secrete what the viscous fluid. And that all can also trigger this movement of what this sperm and uh, hyaluronidase, hyaluronic acid interaction also making the sperms to move directly to the egg only. Hyaluronidase enzyme, it is what the enzyme present in the, the acrosome region of the sperm and hyaluronic acid is what an enzyme present on the surface of the egg and there is an attraction and interaction between these two enzymes that also helping the sperms to move directly uh, to the egg for fertilization. Right. And this is what the capacitation process. Then come to the process of fertilization. There are two events in this uh, fertilization. First one is what the penetration of the egg membrane. And second one is what the mixing of chromosomes. See, at the time of fertilization, the entire male reproductive gametes are not entering into the egg. Male reproductive gametes send only the genetic material into the egg at the time of fertilization. You know that uh, male reproductive gametes is having the head region, then middle piece and tail. And uh, these uh, entire uh, sperms are not entering into the egg for fertilization. It's, uh, it send only the nucleus and we call it as what the pronucleus. This pronucleus only taken into the cell cytoplasm or uh, cytoplasm of the egg cell at the time of what the fertilization. So to take this uh, um, nucleus of the sperm into the cytoplasm of the egg, first that membrane should be uh, penetrated. That is what the first event called as what the penetration of egg membrane. How to penetrate, how to make a small hole in the uh, uh, wall of this egg. Because you know at the end in the acrosome region of the sperm there are many enzymes and these enzymes are what the digestive enzymes or hydrolytic enzymes only. And by using this enzyme, it can digest this uh, wall of the egg and through this gap only, it is sending what the male reproductive gamete inside. And another one is what the mixing of chromosomes, that pronucleus, uh, pronucleus of male gamete, it uh, should be mixed with uh, what the pronucleus of what the female gamete. And uh, both are having what nuclear envelope. Male gamete is sending the nucleus inside, it's having the nuclear envelope. And female gamete is also having a definite uh, nuclear uh, structure with what the nuclear envelope. So for the mixing, that nuclear envelope should be dissolved. So all these events are happening during what the mixing of chromosomes that only we are going to discuss here in detail. And this is what the egg, and uh, this is what the corona radiator. And uh, second layer, it is uh, what in uh, given in uh, this yellow color that is sauna pellucida. 
and here there is a space called as what the periwitline space this is what the periwitline space here and uh, uh, this is what the witline membrane there is a membrane here that is periwitline uh, membrane and this is what the space here called as what the periwitline space and it is what um, yellow colored one given here that is what the sauna pellucida and this is called as what the corona radiator the outer many loosened cells you can find here and it is called as what the corona radiator and it is sauna pellucida and uh, this one is what the space between the sauna pellucida and the vitelline membrane called as what the periwitelline space and this is what the periwitelline membrane and here inside the membrane we can find so many granules and these are called as what the cortical granules only right and uh, whenever we are discussing about the penetration of the egg membrane we should uh, see that how this sperm is sending its what the nucleus inside. This is what the event. The first it is what attacking the egg with its head region only. And by using some kinds of chemical, it uh, digests the corona radiator. And it is reaching what the sauna pellucida by using enzyme that sauna pellucida also get digested. And finally, after digesting this, uh, you know, that head region of the egg reaching to what the vitelline membrane and by breaking this vitelline membrane only it is sending what the pronuclease inside the cell cytoplasm. And this is what the first event that is what the penetration of the egg membrane by this male then come to the details of the penetration of the egg membrane. See, there are two membranes for the egg. Just now I told you here it is what the corona radiator and another one is what the sauna pellucida. There are two membranes for a corona radiator, outer one and inner one is called as what the sauna pellucida. And corona radiator is digested by corona radiator penetrating enzyme present in the sperm lysine. The sperm lysine means what? In the head region of the sperm, there is an acrosome and inside the acrosome, lot of enzymes are there and it is collectively called as what? The lysine only. And in this lysine, some enzymes are there especially to digest the corona and we call it as what? The corona, radi uh, ra uh, corona radiate penetrating enzyme. Corona radiator penetrating enzyme. With the, such enzyme, corona radiator is digested. And uh, another one is what sauna pellucida, and it is digested with uh, sauna lysine or acrosin. Sauna lysine is another enzyme, uh, help to digest the sauna pellucida, second inner lining, inner layer of what the egg membrane. And uh, these two enzymes are present in the sperm lysine, present in the acrosomal region. So that is why it is attacking, that uh, membrane is attacked by the uh, male reproductive gamete with its head region only. And head region consists of this enzyme. By using this enzyme only, it digests what the corona radiator and also digests what the zona pellucida, right? Then there are two, uh, here you can see, approaching the sperm, the sperm uh, attacking uh, the egg with its head region only and uh, it break what this uh, acrosome and uh, this uh, release what the enzyme and by using this enzyme corona radiator is uh, digested and sauna pellucida is also digested and taking its nucleus inside. The nucleus is taking inside and it is called as what the pronucleus that only fertilized with the nucleus of the egg. Right here it is what the periwitelline space and uh, this is what the egg plasma membrane or uh, it is called as what the vitelline membrane or egg membrane. And there is a space between what this membrane, egg membrane or vitelline membrane and uh, the zona pellucida and this space is called as what the periwitelline space see immediately after entering the sperm taking that uh, sperm nucleus that is pronucleus into the egg cytoplasm what happened all the cortical granules you can see the granules here cortical granules arranged near to that uh, uh, that vitelline membrane that will break and uh, taking that uh, granule inside the space. And uh, that will be making this membrane impermeable so that no chance of entry of any kinds of sperms next time. 
So what will happen uh, after the uh, after taking a pronucleus of the sperm into the cell cytoplasm? If another one enters, that uh, cell will be triploid in nature. That is not permitted because uh, such a type of individual will not able to survive. That is why immediately after taking that uh, pronucleus of the male gamete inside, all the cortical granules, you know, break and it uh, take this granule into the perivitelline space and make this membrane impermeable so that uh, no sperm can enter further inside the cytoplasm of the egg cell. And uh, this is what uh, entry of the sperm inside uh, the egg cell only by making, uh, uh, di by digesting the uh, membrane of the egg cell. Then come to the next one. That is what the mixing of chromosome. See, now that the pronucleus of the sperm is inside the cytoplasm of the egg only. And uh, afterwards, these two uh, chromosomes, chromosomes of the paternal side and the chromosomes of the maternal side. You know, 23 chromosomes given by the maternal side and it find what the 23 chromosomes of the maternal side and go for uh, a mixing. Then only it will be converted into a diploid cell. And this is what the next event during the fertilization, mixing of these two chromosomes. See, as soon as the head of the sperm touches the ovum, suddenly ovum complete the cell division. Remember the ovum formation or oogenesis. It complete the meiosis number two and produce what the pronuclei of the egg cell and polanuclei. Polanuclei is what uh, inefficient and uh, uh, it is not having any role here for the fertilization. It is rudimentary, very small in size, that polar cells. And the male and female pronuclei move towards each other and uh, disintegrate this nucleus. Both are haploid only. That means these pronuclei come close to each other in cell cytoplasm and disintegrate the uh, cell, I mean, uh, nuclear envelope. You know, both the nucleus is having the envelope and it is having well-defined nucleus. The pronuclei of male gamete and female gamete, both are having uh, the nuclear envelope. And first, the nuclear envelope, uh, what you can say, disappear or it is uh, disintegrate. Now, that chromosome is free, uh, that uh, both chromosomes of the paternal parent and maternal parents are free, then only they go for what the mixing after pairing and mixing of these two paternal and maternal chromosome, again it is making what the uh, envelope, that is nuclear envelope, so that the haploid cell will be converted into what a diploid uh, cell after the fertilization. Egg is haploid and fertilized egg is diploid in nature. And fertilized egg only we call it as what the zygote and this zygote only undergo the further development. Okay. Then male and female pronuclei move towards each other and they disintegrate. It's what the nuclear envelope. And uh, both are having 23 chromosomes each. And uh, this, uh, now that chromosomes are free, they go for mixing and pairing paternal and maternal chromosome and uh, followed by the formation of nuclear envelope. After the mixing and pairing of the paternal and maternal chromosome, it is making a nuclear envelope and this fertilized egg is called as what the zygote and it is diploid in nature. Diploid means what the chromosomes are in pair. And in pair, one set of chromosomes given by the paternal parent, another chromosome is given by the maternal parents only. But cytoplasm of what the fertilized egg is completely donated by the egg only. It's what contributed by the female. And the role of male is only to contribute the genetic material, right? That is why we can find a lot of variations in the coming generations. And that is what the importance of what the sexual reproduction, mixing of chromosome, mixing of genetic material. 50% of the genetic contribution from the paternal parents only in case of sexual reproduction and the remaining 50% of the contribution by the female parent only, right? Then this is what the paired chromosome, 23 pairs of chromosome you know, present in the female individual after this chromosomal mixing, it go for pairing, right? It is uh, like a 23 chromosome pair we have. In case of what the, uh, this is what the karyotyping. Karyotyping means what arranging all the chromosome according to the height only. That is what the karyotyping to understand the chromosomes in pair only. I am showing this slide here. 
it is what the first pair second pair third pair fourth fifth sixth seven like uh, 23 pairs of chromosome we have and these 22 uh, pairs of chromosome we call it as what the body chromosomes or autosomes only and in case of male suppose the zygote does become a male individual so that zygote consists of what the one x chromosome and uh, one the y chromosome and that only we call it as what uh, sex determining chromosome or sex chromosomes so in case of male this will be x and y Whereas in case of female, it will be X, X chromosomes only, right? That we will see in some other chapter, the details of what the sex determination, right? This is what the pairing of chromosome take place at the time of fertilization. Every uh, chromosome donated by the male find out it's what the pair from the female genome and go for pairing and making what another nuclear envelope and it is getting what the nuclear structure back and this only we call it as what the uh, zygote. Then there are two terms also mentioned in your textbook. One is what the monosperm is, simple terms only. Monosperm means what the fertilization of egg with a single sperm. Normally only one sperm is permitted to enter inside as I told you. After that, uh, what that vitelline space is filled with uh, 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 granules. So it never permit the next sperm to enter inside, right? So normally it's what the mon is monosperm only. And suppose the fertilization of egg with more than one sperm and it is not viable because the chromosome number is what the triploid, tetraploid, etc. only. And uh, such uh, uh, things are called as what the polyspermy. Polyspermy is what the fusion of one egg cell with many number of sperm, more than one sperm. And monospermy is very common and it is what the fertilization of the egg with uh, only a single sperm. And this product is what always deployed, whereas in polyspermy it will be triploid or tetraploid or depends on the number of sperms entering into the ovum and it is uh, non-viable. So such type of what the triploid or tetraploid uh, uh, zygote never survives non-viable, it never attached to uh, the uterine wall or never implant. And how we are preventing such type of polyspermy? Because only one day there are many thousands of sperms and these sperms are always uh, moving towards the egg and uh, who is getting the opportunity to enter first, that only will fertilize. But chances are there many sperms to fertilize with the same uh, ovum that should be prevented. How we are preventing such type of polysperming? Then, first one is what the depolarization of the egg membrane. And this is also asked once in the board examination years back. Mechanisms to prevent polysperming in human beings. And the depolarization of the egg membrane. Because after this fertilization, you know that egg membrane lose its what the permeability. It lose its permeability and become very resistant against the enzyme present in the sperm. Whenever this another sperm attach the egg after fertilization with its head that uh, sperm lies in never digest what this uh, impermeable membrane produce after the fertilization. And it is losing the permeability and it is very resistant against what the enzyme present in the sperm. Only one sperm can digest the membrane and next sperm, uh, you know, producing sperm lies in, but it is not effective and uh, that membrane is resistant to these enzymes so that it cannot be penetrated. And the cortical uh, reaction. Sona pellucida make a thick coating over the egg after the fertilization. Sona pellucida, that the white, uh, I mean, uh, uh, yellow colored structure. Here we have seen that uh, sona pellucida here. Here, this is what the sona pellucida. It is also making a very thick structure after this fertilization. So it never permit what another sperm to enter inside. That is what the cortical reaction. So, Napalucida make a thick coating over the egg after the fertilization is called as what the cortical reaction and uh, this never permit another sperms to enter inside. So, these are the uh, some of the way to avoid the polyspermy in human being. There are two things making that the egg membrane impermeable and another one is what the cortical uh, reactions only. See, it is what 
the uh, events happening here uh, approaching uh, that sperm binding the sperm into the sona pellucida and corona radiata after uh, what you can say uh, breaking or digesting this corona uh, these two layers you know a chromosomal reaction only it's produce what enzyme and it penetrate through the sona pellucida and it is uh, entering inside by breaking what the plasma membrane and after entering the nucleus into the cytoplasm of the egg this membrane become very resistant to all type of enzyme present in the sperm lysine and this zona pellucida is also uh, what you can say converted into a thick uh, layer over it so that uh, second sperm is not permitted to enter inside and these are the events that uh, attacking this uh, egg with uh, its head region acrosome consists of enzyme that enzyme will be released that will leave or digest what the all the layers of the egg membrane and finally it is taken inside the nucleus and it is called as what the sperm nucleus and this cortical granule after taking the pronucleus of the sperm into the egg cytoplasm see that uh, cortical granule it break and send its what the granule into the space between this uh, what you can say that wetland space it is sending to the wetland space and it cover the end area so that no chance of entering this is what the granules see after the entry see the granules you know will be sent to the space wetland space and cover the end area so that no chance of the entry of another sperm inside for fertilization and uh, this polyspermy can be prevented then come to the embryonic development up to the implantation after implantation further development is also there see actually the process of fertilization take place in the ambulary region of ovidite and after this fertilization it take one week to reach to the uh, uterus for the implantation why because sperms can move so quickly because it is having the organ for locomotion organ for movement tail is there and it is very energetic and very active so that it moves so quickly towards the egg for fertilization but after fertilization that fertilized egg is not at all having any locomotory organ so gradually very slowly only it move towards the uterus for implantation because no locomotory organ uh, you remember uh, that uh, inner lining of the oviduct is having so many ciliary epithelium and this epithelium that cilia present in the epithelium start moving fluttering and that such type of uh, ciliary movement only making that fertilized egg move towards the egg for implantation and it take exactly one week and this movement is very slow and immediately after fertilization it start uh, doing the further development and at the time of implantation it complete what the morula stage and blastula stage and this blastula only will be implanted on the uterus that uh, immediately after fertilization that fertilized egg start uh, its cleavage it divide and uh, number of times it divide and finally it produce what the morula and this process of converting that zygote into morula is called as what the morulation. Then this morula again go for some kinds of what the division and the changes and it produce blastula and uh, it take one week to convert the fertilized egg into morula and blastula and this blastula only will be implanted on the uterine wall. So that will really we are going to discuss here embryonic development up to the implantation. See, fertilization take place in the ambulary region of oviduct only here. You can see what the ambulary region of the oviduct here. This is what the real process of what the fertilization take place, ambulary region only. And uh, after fertilization, it go very slowly and immediately it go for division, zygote will divide and they go for division repeatedly and go through the different stages of development and take one week. Uh, to reach to the uh, uterus for the implantation in the body of uh, the uterus only this will be implanted now this inner layer of what the uterus called as what the endometrium is get ready for the implantation but it implant only the blastocyst not the fertilized egg 
fertilization take place here in the ambulatory region but immediately after fertilization it go for division continuously and take one week to reach here to the uterus for implantation why because there is no locomotory organ for the fertilized egg to move and it is moving with the support of our the ciliary epithelium which is lining in the inner lining of the oviducts only so slowly slowly it move and uh, during its movement you know it's undergo a lot of changes and lot of development and finally it will be converted into blastocyst and that only will be implanted on the uterine wall this is what the blastocyst and this only will be implanted on the uterine wall and further development uh take place in the uterus only the conversion of the blastula into what a baby it is happening in the uterus only and uh, that is what the development after implantation now we are discussing about what the development before this implantation that is uh, up to the implantation only see after fertilization zygotes start moving towards the uterus because they want to implant and uh, it takes one week to reach to the uterus for the implantation because it is very slow process immediately after fertilization zygote start its development into morula a multicellular structure only and uh, then its morula will be converted into blastula first zygote into morula then morula into blastula and this blastodermic vesicle only will be implanted on the uterine wall and see the uh this is what the fertilized egg only and it is what the pronuclei of both the male and female gamete go for fertilization or fusion and go for pairing and after that the cell will go for division and division of the fertilized egg is called as what the cleavage it divide produce two cell then next division produce uh, four cell next division produce eight cell like that it go for uh, continuous division and produce what a multicellular structure varies uh, but there is no growth in the size of the zygote the zygote and morula first stage is what the morula the size of the morula and zygote is same only only what the division of cell happening no growth there and that multicellular uh, structure is called as what the morula due to what the continuous cleavage only and this cell go for compaction and a type of arrangement and differentiation so naturally this morula will be converted into what a blastula stage only blastula stage and this blastula only will be implanted on the uterine wall right it go for compaction and also go for differentiation lot of movement will be there and we call it as what the morphogenic movement and because of what this compaction differentiation and movement of the cell that the cluster of the cell present in the morula will be converted into what a blastula and this blastodermic vesicle it is called as what the blastula stage or blastodermic vesicle that will be attached to the uterine wall and after implantation it will go for further development and finally it's converted into what um, a fully uh, developed embryo inside then this is what the blastula stage, blastula that only will be implanted on this uterine wall. <clears throat> See, uh, this is what the process of fertilization. This is a egg fertilized with the male reproductive gamete and go for the cell division while moving through what the oviduct. And whenever it comes to the uterus region, this will be converted, that uh, zygote will be converted into morula, then morula into what blastula. And this blastula, uh, we call it as what the blastocyst or blastodermic vesicle, that only will be implanted on the uterine wall, right. Then this is what the conversion of zygote into morula. As I told you, the size of the zygote and the size of the morula will be same only, but the number of cell present in the zygote is only one, but morula, many will be there, around 30, 36 will be there, right. It's go for repeated division here, right, divide. And it is called as what the cleavage, it is what the two cell stage, then four cell stage, then eight cell stage, 16 cell and 32 cell stage. And it is what 32 cell stage uh, structure is called as what the morula and it is due to what the repeated cleavage only, repeated cell division only. You divide first, 
then second, third, then fourth time it divide and produce what this morula. But you see the size of the morula and fertilized egg. It is what the same only, but the size of the cell is very less. I mean, uh, size is very, uh, what you can say, small in case of what the morula compared to the egg cell. Right. Then this is what the development of zygote, single cell, then uh, two cell stage, four cell stage, then 8 cell stage, then uh, 16 cell stage, and uh, 32 cell stage, right? And uh, this morula only will be converted into what the blastocyst or blastodermic vesicle. And this blastodermic vesicle only will be implanted. It is the first day, second day, and uh, seventh day, you know, it will be converted into blastocyst. And that time, what happened, this will reach to the uterine wall, and this only will be implanted on this uterine wall. Right. Then uh, morula to blastula. Right. This is what the division only or cell will divide 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Then afterwards, this morula go for uh, a morphogenic movement, also go for differentiation and compaction. And because of the compaction, differentiation and uh, the morphogenic movement, it is getting another structure with what a space here called as what the blastocyst. And uh, these are all the tropoectoderm. And this structure is what the blastula, and this blastula only will be implanted on the uterine wall. Right. These are all what the structure of what the morula, morula into blastula, and with a, a cavity filled with a liquid material, we call it as what the blastocyst, and this only will be implanted on the uterine wall, and this is what the detailed structure of blastula. Then uh, having a cavity that is called as what the blastocyst, and uh, it is having what uh, protective uh, single layer of uh, structure that is what the tropoblast, and there are some the mass of cell present here in one side of the blastula, and it is called as what the inner cell mass, and this only will be implanted on the uterine wall, and here you can find the inner cell mass. And this inner cell mass only undergo the process of division and differentiation and produce what three germ layers, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. See, after implantation, the inner cell mass will uh, produce three type of germ cell in the embryo initially. Ectoderm, outermost one, mesoderm is the middle one, and endoderm is what the innermost one. What is the use of preparing these three germ layers? Actually, these three germ layers are for producing all the internal and external organs in human. See, whenever this go for development into a fetus, and it produces many organs inside and also produces many organs outside. And all the internal and external organs of the human being is developed from only these three germ layers, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. Some organs are ectodermal in origin, and some cells are what endodermal in origin, and some cells are what the mesodermal in origin. And the entire organs of uh, human body, external and internal, is originated from any one of the germ cell, and all these germ cells are produced from the inner cell mass only during its developmental stage. And that is why we are called as what triploblastic individual. Triploblastic. That means there are three germ layers. There are three germ layers in the embryonic stage, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. And all our internal and external organs are being der derived or developed from any one of what the uh, germ layer only. Ectoderm is the outermost layer. It is from the some of the cells of the inner cell mass. And some other cell of the inner mass only does become the middle layer called as what mesoderm. And remaining uh, inner cell mass, you know, develop to become the innermost layer called as what the endoderm. Endoderm, ectoderm, and mesoderm. And every organs of our body is uh, formed from either ectoderm or endoderm or uh, mesoderm only. That is why we are called as what the triploblastic individual. Three layers, triploblastic. Three layers of uh, germ cells are there in our embryonic stage for the development of all internal and external organs, right? Then come to the development after the impl uh, implantation. Now, blastodermic vesicle only implanted on the uterine wall. 
then further development of this embryo happening after the implantation see first this morula stage only and uh, it's also complete what this blastula stage and produce what the blastodermic vesicle within a week and all these events happening while traveling the fertilized egg from the ambulary region to the uterus for the implantation but after implantation that was uh, blastodermic vesicle also undergo for the further development that is what the development after implantation see blastodermic vesicle that is what the blastula stage only after implantation undergo the development immediately as i told you inner cell mass present in the blastodermic vesicle undergo a type of movement and we call it as what the morphogenic movement only and this uh, movement of the inner cell mass only produce three germ layers what are the three germ layers as i told you what ectoderm is what outermost layer and mesoderm it is what the middle layer and endoderm is the innermost layer and this process is called as what the gastrulation process so conversion of what the blastula into gastrula the next stage of development first one is what zygote then morula then gastrula and next one is what the gastrulation and gastrulation is because of what the movement of the inner cell mass we call it as what the morphogenic movement only and this movement of the inner cell mass only responsible for producing these three germ layers outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner uh, endoderm right and this process uh, is what the gastrulation and end product is called as what the gastrula so this is what the blastodermic vesicle that only implanted on the uterine wall and uh, inner cell mass you can see here and this inner cell mass only go for uh, a type of movement inside and it's producing what three germ layers inside ectoderm endoderm and uh, mesoderm ectoderm is the outermost one endoderm we can find this given here with the yellow color it is what the endoderm and uh, middle one that is what the mesoderm that we can see here with uh, that red colored one orange or red colored here right ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm ectoderm is outermost one endoderm is the innermost one and middle germ layer is called as what the mesoderm and all ex, uh, internal and external organs of human being is developed during the embryonic stage from any one of what the germ layers only that is why we call it as what the triploblastic individual then no need to go in very detail about the organogenesis that is not there in your textbook organogenesis means what the formation of organ from these uh, uh, ectoderm endoderm and uh, mesoderm the germ layers that is not there and come to these uh, different organs of ectodermal origin some of the examples given here these are the organs uh, developed from the ectoderm that is what the germ layer outermost uh, germ layer ectoderm only epidermis then epidermal glands like a sweat gland then hair then conjunctiva the islands then ren la retina then internal ear then foregut hindgut then central nervous system then posterior pituitary gland adrenal medulla pineal gland these are all some examples of the organ uh, developed from the ectoderm the outermost germ layer of the embryo and these are the organs of ectodermal origins right and uh, some other organs you know it is uh, originated from the mesoderm only and these are the organs of the mesodermal origin some like uh, muscles or connective tissue bones and cartilage then circulatory system then kidney uterus gonad then adrenal cortex these are all what the internal organs uh, uh, present in an individual developed from the mesoderm only and these are the organs of mesodermal origin then uh, come to the organs of what the innermost layer of our germ cell that is what endoderm organs of endodermal origin like midgut urinary bladder lungs liver pancreas thyroid and parathyroid then thymus anterior pituitary lobe then primary germ cell these are all formed from the endodermal lining of the embryo only in the initial stage so all as i told you all the internal and external organ of the individual is developed either from any one of the germ layer 
either from the ectoderm or from the mesoderm or from the endoderm only. And that's why we are all uh, referred as what the triploblastic individual. Then come to the extra embryonic membranes. Extra embryonic membrane here. After this implantation of the fetus on the uterine wall, made a lot of things for its what the development in the uterus. And uh, we can find there are three things here in the uterus for its development. And we call it as what the extra embryonic membranes only. Amnion is there, yolk sac is there, allandois and chorion. These are also there in case of embryo for its development. And we call it as what the extra embryonic membrane. And uh, yolk sac is rudimentary. Because it is not like uh, reptiles or not like birds. In case of birds and reptiles, they are laying egg. So they are keeping a lot of yolk inside the egg for the entire development of the young one inside. Whereas in case of mammal, it is always connected to the mother. And mother is constantly supplying the material for the development of young one. So no need to keep much kind of food in the uh, egg for the development. So yolk sac is what very rudimentary. And these are the three things called uh, what extra embryonic membrane only. Then first one is what the amnion. We will discuss one by one uh, all the extra embryonic membrane. And first one is what the um, amnion only. And here you can find this amnion. This is what the amnion where the embryo is getting developed. There is a fluid fill in the amnion here. We can find this uh, amnion, that fluid fill in the amnion. See, this is what the amnion, it is inside the uterus only. This is what the amnion, inside there is a fluid. And this fluid, inside the fluid only, this embryo is getting developed. And it is called as what the amniotic fluid. This fluid present in the amnion is called as what the amniotic fluid. So embryo is situated inside the amnion for the development. Amnion is filled with uh, a fluid called as what the amniotic fluid and function of the amnion as a shock absorber to protect the embryo. Embryo can be protected well inside the uterus because this uh, embryo is getting developed in a fluid only and the fluid is filled in this amnion and the fluid present in the amnion is called as what the amniotic fluid. And this amniotic fluid helped to determine actually the sex of the individual. Previously, we used to uh, check the chromosomal abnormalities of the developing fetus uh, through a technique called as what the aminosynthesis. We will collect what the cells of what the developing embryo from the amniotic fluid and we will go for uh, karyotyping. Actually, what is the use of the karyotyping? In karyotyping, we will arrange all the chromosomes according to the height. All the 23 chromosomes we will arrange and check whether all the chromosomes are correct or not. So for that purpose only, this amniosynthesis done earlier, but this is what the easiest way to identify the sex. So later what happened, this technique used for the female fetus uh, to destroy the female fetus. So that is why it is banned. And uh, that technique is called as what the aminosynthesis, checking the um, what you can say, entire chromosomes of uh, a developing child by uh, keeping it in uh, uh, according to the height, we do it karyotyping and find out the defects. Because uh, this uh, fluid consists of what the cells of what the developing child. This is what the amnion, it is given in blue color and it is uh, filled with what a liquid material and it is called as what the amniotic fluid and uh, this is what the amniotic cavity there is a cavity where this liquid is filled and it is called as what the amniotic cavity and the structure is called as what the amnion and the fluid filled in the amnion is called as what the amniotic fluid right and here we can find this chorion here it's another uh, extra um, membrane uh, that is what the amnion and you can see the chorion here alando is here we will see one by one later and uh, here we can see yolk sac and these are the extra embryonic membrane amnion yolk sac alando is and chorion and this is what the amnion and it is what the i mean this is what the uh, 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 
amnion and amniotic fluid and this is what the chorion here you can see the chorion and uh, here we can see the allandois here this is what the allandois and uh, here you can find the yolk sacs and these are the uh, three type of for the extra uh, embryonic membrane present in the human being then come to the yolk sac as i told you yolk sac is very rudimentary very rudimentary and uh, uh, not very functional and it is very uh, but in the early stage you can find it and uh, it disintegrates and degenerates soon it is uh, prominent in embryo of birds and reptiles because in case of embryo birds and reptiles you know it is getting every nutrient from the yolk uh, stored in the egg cell only because after laying egg there is no connection between the mother and uh, developing embryo in case of reptiles and the birds that is why the egg is larger in size because it is full of yolk for uh, supplying the nutrient during the process of development one uh, development of egg one inside right whereas in case of human being it is not required because it is uh, that developing child you know it is connected to the mother all the time and mother is providing all the nutrients uh, uh, through this umbilical cord so no need to keep much amount of what the nutrients in the yolk but still it is there but it is very rudimentary and uh, it get uh, disintegrate and degenerate uh, soon right here we can see the yolk sac this is what the yolk sac here very small yolk sac and it is also connected to that uh, embryo here we can see everything this is what the yolk sac initially it is there this yolk sac and it is connected to what the developing child and it is only providing the nutrient constantly whereas in case of human being it uh, it is not having much relevant because it is connected to the mother and uh, mother only providing the food and other material every time for the developing embryo so it is not having much uh, significance in case of human being right then this is what the yolk sac here you can see the yolk sac it is very large in the initial stage and uh, um, it is only supplying what the nutrients to the developing child right this is what the yolk sac but it is uh, get disintegrated soon and it is a uh, functionless right then here this is what the yolk sac you can see it is given in yellow color and it's full of what the nutrient and this nutrient only utilized by the embryo in the early stage for the development in case of what the uh, birds and reptile it is very large and very functional because the developing child you know completely utilizing that uh, food stored in the yolk sac only then this is what the structure of the yolk sac here you can find the yolk sac and blood supply is there to the yolk sac and it is helping for uh, getting material stored in the yolk sac and it is what the umbilical cord umbilical cord and it is what the chorion and uh, this connected to what the placenta and through umbilical cord material can be taken by the developing child from the mother individual right then come to another one the chorion and uh, allantois and actually both are taking part in the placenta formation our placenta is what chorion allantoic placenta what is the use of the placenta placenta is acting as what an ultra filter and everything cannot be taken by the embryo from the mother some kinds of uh, filtration should be there and similarly everything cannot be taken from the child to the mother some kinds of filtration should be there for example uh, sometimes the embryo may be what uh, uh, b positive in its blood group and uh, mother baby b negative if we allow these two blood to mix chances are there for uh, abortion of the pregnancy so to avoid such type of thing some restriction is there from uh, some restrictions are there to transfer the material from the mother to developing child or from developing child back to the mother and uh, this uh, uh, placenta is uh, working in between the mother and uh, the developing embryo and it is what the ultra filter right and it is made with uh, the chorion and allantois and that is why our placenta is called as our chorio allantoic placenta right and both are taking part uh, taking part in the placental formation 
and uh, human placenta is called as what chorioallantoic placenta and embryo part is called as what the chorion and mother part is called as what the allantois that mother part allantois and uh, that embryo part cho chorion both are uh, taking part in the formation of what the placenta in human being. Placenta is what ultra filter present in between that uh, mother and child and that only separate and filtrate the material before passing from the child to mother or from mother back to the child. Right. Then here you can see that uh, chorion and uh, allantois. Allantois, this is what the allantoic region and this is what the, uh, what you can say, chorion. And this chorion and allantois only fuse here to form what the placenta and the placenta is working as what an ultra filter before sending the material from the mother to embryo, it get filtered and sending uh, uh, whenever uh, materials are sent from this embryo to the mother, Again, that will be properly filtered and it is what an ultra filter, right? Select material for, and uh, such a selected material only allowed to pass from the mother to child or from embryo to this mother, right? And our placenta is also hemochoral placenta. That means there is no direct blood connection between the fetus and mother. See that uh, blood vessels of the mother is uh, blended in the placental region and uh, the blood capillary of the fetus also blended in the uh, placental region. But there is no direct blood connection between the mother and child. That means the blood of mother never uh, flow directly to the child and uh, child blood never flow directly to the mother body. So placenta is there in between and blood vessel of this mother and the developing fetus blend in the placental region and such a type of placenta only we call it as what the hemochoral placenta. See fetal blood capillary grow and connected to uterine mucosa with the chorionic villi. You can find so many villi here. Here these are all what uh, villi and it is end with the villi only right and uh, fetal blood capillary grew and connected to the uterine mucosa with uh, that chorionic villi and there is no direct blood connection between the mother and the developing child developing child and mother never connected with the blood vessel and both blood capillaries are bath in the placenta region that uh, uh, blood vessels of the mother blended in the placenta and uh, blood vessel of the developing fetus also blended in the placenta never connect each other and both blood capillaries are bathed in the placenta and placenta only acting as what the ultra fetal that only permit what to move from the mother to child or what not to move from this mother to what the developing fetus or back because it is working as what the ultra filter there is no direct blood connection between the mother and the fetus and such a type of placenta is called as what the hemochoral placenta right then come to the functions of placenta functions of placenta as i told you it is what an ultra filter this uh, the placenta only select the materials to pass from the mother to child or from the developing fetus to uh, mother and it provides the following uh, things to the fetal body. Developing embryo is getting that uh, material uh, from this placenta only. Soluble organic and inorganic materials will be provided by the placenta to the developing fetus. Then hormones and antibodies are also provided to the developing uh, fetus by the placenta only. And it eliminates the nitrogenous waste material. Nitrogenous waste material produced by the fetus, you know, it is taking to the mother body only along with the with the help of her uh, kidney only it is will be it is uh, taken out and uh, elimination of nitrogenous waste also done by the placenta only and it help for the gas exchange you know mother only providing this oxygen and mother only helping uh, the removal of the carbon dioxide produced uh, in the fetus developing fetus right so that gas exchange takes place through this placenta then synthesis of some protein, it can synthesize some protein and it is acting as what a temporary endocrine gland. That means it secretes so many hormones responsible for the development of fetus in the uterus, right? So that should be by hearted, the name of the hormone secreted by the placenta. 
so placenta is working in an individual as what ultra filter only that only really permit the materials to move from uh, what you can say fetus to mother or from mother to fetus and addition to that it is also secreting lot many hormones responsible for the uh, what you can say existence of what this embryo or development of the embryo in the uterus right then first one is what the human chorionic gonadotropin human chorionic gonadotropin it's secreted by the placenta then chorionic thyrotropin is also secreted by the placenta then chorionic corticotropin that also secreted by the placenta only then chorionic somat uh, somatomammotropin then estrogen progesterone relaxin and uh, human placental lactogen these are the different type of hormones secreted by the placenta only right that human placental lactogen relaxing hormone progesterone estrogen then chorionic soma somatomammotropin then chorionic corticotropin chorionic hydrothyrotropin and human chorionic gonadotropin and uh, these are the uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 the eight hormones secreted by the placenta and collectively we call it as what the placental hormones only so of course it is working as an ultra filter and it is passed the material from the child to mother or mother to child, select the material and permit to move across this placenta. Addition to that, it is also secreting many type of hormone essential for uh, the uh, existence of what the embryo in the uterus, like human chorio, uh, chorionic gonadotropin, then chorionic thyrotropin, chorionic uh, corticotropin, chorionic somatomammotropin, then estrogen, progesterone, relaxin, and uh, the human placenta. That relaxin is produced only at the end after completing the development of the young one in the uterus, and that only helping for the ejection. Right. Then come to the development. See, basic structure of the body of the baby is formed in the first trimester. That means total nine months, then first three months, that is called as what the first trimester. Basic structure of the baby is formed in this first trimester only. That's why people used to tell uh, for uh, some emergencies, you know, like uh, uh, suppose HIV is... Uh, infection is uh, finding the mother naturally that mother has to go for abortion so abortion is very easy in the first trimester because in the first trimester only that basic structure of the body is formed and is not completed right and development involves in the uh, cell division and elongation then cell migration cell differentiation and the first three month fetus is very sensitive to some chemicals because it is making what the basic structure in the body by taking that first three months or we call it as first trimester. And it involves what cell division, only cell divide and elongate, cell migrate from one place to another and cell also go for the differentiation to make different kinds of organ, basic structure of different organ. Then the first three months, you know, the fetus is very sensitive and uh, particularly to some chemical uh, which can interfere the further development. And such agents are called as what the teratogens. Teratogens are nothing but the chemical can interfere the development of this uh, fetus in the first three months. That is why doctors are advising the pregnant ladies to take uh, rest and avoid some kinds of food items or uh, even what medicine also should be avoided in the first trimester because it can affect what the development of the fetus, right? And these are all called as what the tetrajo, teratogen. We call it as what the teratogen. Chemical interfere the development of what the fetus in the first three months. It's called as what the teratogens. And this is what the fetus after the three months of development, right? It is there in the or amnion only and this is called as what amnion and it is in the fluid in the amnion called as what the amniotic fluids that is what the 12 week right then fetal growth from 8 to 40 weeks it is from embryo 8 uh, week then uh, 12 week then 16 20 24 you see the events happening and uh, development happening in the 
what you can say embryo body and it is what uh, embryo in eight week it is uh, very small and uh, having a small tail like structure here and it is what the 12 week and 16 week and 20 week and 24th week and this 24th week only it is producing what the germ cells in case of female to produce what the ovum right and it is what the 40th week right then uh, come to the parturition this is what the last stage of pregnancy see after completing the entire development after completing the entire development of the young one inside the uterus naturally it go for the last stage that is called as what the parturition so signal for parturition originate from fully developed fetus itself and it call it as what the uh, fetal ejection reflex and this question asked once in the board examination signal after the completion of the development of young one inside the uterus that the fully developed uh, what you can say that individual in the uterus itself will give uh, uh, a type of uh, signal for the last uh, that is what parturition through parturition only that uh, fully developed fetus is coming out from the uterine then signal for parturition originate from this fully developed fetus itself and we call it as what the fetal ejection reflex it is to eject this uh, reflex is to eject the fully developed uh, developed fetus from the uterus to outside only and all the steps in the process of parturition under the control of hormone actually it is what neuroendocrine mechanism only Parturition is purely a neuroendocrine mechanism. It is totally controlled by the narrow system as well as the endocrine system. And uh, there are so many hormones produced by uh, the individual uh, during the process of parturition. And the signal for uh, this parturition is uh, actually given by that fully developed fetus only. After getting the signal, uh, naturally, what happened, it go for uh, that mother and the fetal will go for producing different kinds of hormone and so many neural actions are also there. And because of that only really what happened, it go for the last stage and we will see more detail about the parturition, taking that fully developed uh, fetus out. And for uh, this parturition process, a fully developed fetus only giving the reflex. So we will see the events happening during the parturition in the next class. Now this is the time for your breakfast and take the breakfast and uh, uh, enjoy. And uh, we will see the process of parturition in the next class. Okay, thank you so much.